please. Sit down. Thank you. Sit down. And there's a question on the right side in the middle, please. Hi, this is a question for Terence Scott. I come back to you the day email. Will we have to wait another two decades for another masterpiece from you and tell us why it took so long? <laughs> Whom do you ask? Tell us about it. He's not here. Well, I couldn't say it. Maybe he's in here. Well, let's off the axis then. You know, will we, why, do we, why do we have to wait so long for this film and tell us about your experience of working with this great director by Terence Malick? All of the axes. <laughs> Sean, would you start, please? <laughs> bring, bring it back to the question. <laughs> Tell us of your experience in working on this film and with television. Uh, well, hard to find the angle to come in on this. Uh, you know, I think that, that by and large, the, the people that are in this movie did did it because of wanting to work with Terry. Uh, certainly that was the case for me. Um, I think he's, uh, at, at this stage, I think when he stopped making movies 20 years ago, he was among a few uh, directors who were artists in film that remained. I think he's one of a dying breed now. <clears throat> and. Uh, it's, it, it's describing what it's like to work with him is very difficult. It's, it's, like it's, it's like trying to describe Terry, which um, uh, I think he'll always be able to maintain his privacy because you you can't successfully describe Terry. Um, so I'll just say I was glad I, I'm glad I got to participate in, in, in this thing. Anyone to add? Maybe me. Uh, 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 I, I think Sean covered it real well. Uh, uh, he's um, an interesting fellow. Uh, I, I think that, uh, uh, you know, he doesn't make his living in, in the film industry. And uh, I, I think that's rather smart, you know, because... Um, he doesn't have to rely on the money from making films to do his, do his art. So he keeps uh, it rather pure. And I think he takes as long as he wants to take. And uh, that's basically it. And I, I think he won't become public because he doesn't uh, want celebrityhood to interfere with creating. And uh, I don't know if any of that's true. Here's a question on the left side, please. Uh, Mr. Penn, uh, you're welcome to uh, Berlin. Uh, what do you think about uh, sort of a fashion uh, during the uh, last season in movies? They say in Private Ryan and then again your film. Uh, what do you think about this fashion, about uh, picturing uh, the uh, sacrificing of the world, the world, uh, war, number two? What, what do you think about this fashion in movies? You're yes, asking yes, me? Yes, of course, Mr. Ben. You're asking me what? About the fashion, <laughs> about the fashion, a sort of a fashion uh, on movies. The fa uh, fashion? Yes, a sort of fashion. I'm not interested in fashion, and I don't describe this fashion. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, then the left side in the middle, please. Um, over on, on this side, Andrew Guinness with United Media International. First of all, Mr. Milton, congratulations on your Oscar nomination. Thank you. Well, yes, we live in Hollywood, so that's... <laughs> Maybe the younger actors can add something for the research, their research on their part. <laughs> The younger actors? <laughs> who, who do you mean? Yeah. Spent time in Kentucky with the veterans there who had uh, fought. It was interesting about him. A lot of them grew up during the Depression. 
And um, so they didn't have a, a lot of money back then, but the family was certainly different. And um, so I kind of used that based on my character. Um, Helen Garbo from oh, Courier Mail, the Queensland newspaper, um, where the film was shot. Um, I'm interested, I, I actually fought war myself in the Daytree Rainforest and helped to stop it from being um, destroyed by developers. And now it's great to see that a film's being made there. It is one of the most beautiful places I've ever been to. And I think Terence Snake has really replicated the beauty that I remember and love on film. Um, I don't know which one of you would like to comment on what it was like um, shooting in this environment which was so civilised and actually touristy and not wild at all in a way, the wild natural beauty, and how um, much you were surprised by how Terence dealt with the imagery. I don't know if the cinematographer would like to um, talk about the way it was shot a bit and if one or two of the actors could comment on their experiences um, in this kind of more civilised rainforest than Guadalcanal. Well, was, we went to Guadalcanal. We actually shot on Guadalcanal as well as uh, shooting in Australia. And uh, the reason we went to Queensland is because it, it, it really did, did resemble uh, the terrain and, and the and, uh, climate of uh, Guadalcanal. So uh, it, it wasn't quite as difficult to shoot in Queensland as it really was in the Solomon Islands, but uh, it, it wasn't easy by any means. <coughs> The actors from the Queen of the Japanese, I thought, were phenomenal as well. Can any of you uh, give us more information about those actors and how they participated? Uh, we actually, uh, Tim and I just got, got back from Tokyo, spent eight days there. Uh, the Japanese actors were all unknown uh, at the time. And, uh, uh, we were constantly told uh, by the Japanese people that the, these actors did an amazing job. It's difficult for us to tell. Uh, we don't speak Japanese, but um, apparently the Japanese public was, uh, say that second and third generation Japanese people are continually uh, representing the Japanese people in Hollywood. And that uh, upsets them. And um, they said they were very relieved to see an authentic, uh, authentic Japanese speaker.